This is the first in a set of videos looking at what is feedback? Why do we use feedback? This video is the introduction. So some background. We're going to assume that students are familiar with the concept of open loop. However, this video revisits that briefly. We are also going to assume that students are familiar with block diagrams and if you're not familiar with those, we suggest you go and look at the videos which cover block diagrams and closed loop transfer functions. These videos are going to focus on some other concepts, such as why do we need feedback? What is feedback? What is the impact of adding feedback? And are there good and bad feedbacks? Let's start then by looking at open loop control. Imagine you need to get your car to 60 miles an hour. You might be on a nice free straight road, but you're not allowed to look at the speedometer or hear the engine revs. How would you do it? How would you get the car to the required speed? So in all likelihood, you'd have to call on experience and memory and estimate, that's the key word, you'd have to estimate the foot pedal position required to reach the desired speed. So this is how you do it. You'd estimate the steady state gain of the car i.e. what's the relationship between your foot position and the speed of the car. So if I write that down here, you're essentially saying speed equals g of zero times your foot position. That's what you're going to do. And then, given that you know you want the speed to be 60, you can get the foot position by dividing the speed by g of zero. So you see, that's what we've written here. The foot position is one of g of zero times 60. Now will this work? Let's use some numbers to check. We're going to assume that our model for the car says that g of 0 is 15. So let's substitute that in here. What do we get? We get 1 over 15 times 60 equals 4 equals u. So you're going to implement a u of 4. However, the actual system gain is 20. So if the actual system gain is 20, and I plug that into this equation here, I'm going to get, oops, we seem to have lost everything there, sorry about that. We're going to get 20 times 4 equals 80. And so therefore, what your speed's going to do, it's not going to go to 60 as you desired. It's going to go up to 80. And you're going to end up with a speeding ticket. So what you've shown is the fact that you can't read the speedometer, you can't hear the engine revs, you've got no information about the actual speed you're going, so you're guessing, and you might guess incorrectly. Here's an example in block diagrams of what's actually going on. You're given a target. That's the output that you want. You have a model of what you think the system gain is. And you're going to divide the car target by the system gain, and that's going to give you the input. However, that input is going to go through the actual process here, I've called it g dash of s, to give you the output. Now, of course, in practice, g of 0 is not going to be the same as g dash of 0. If they were the same, then the output would equal the target, and you'd be happy. But in practice, what you're going to get is that the output equals g dash of 0 over g of 0 times the target. And clearly, if g dash of 0 is not the same as g of 0, the output will not match the target. So open loop control will not work. So you'll see what we've put down there, if I rub out the ad, the target will not match the output. Let's give a different representation of this. In practice, it might be you as a person who represent this block, one of g of zero. So what we've done is we've replaced one of g of zero by this human here. Now, the human knows what the target is. They're told the target. And their job then is to say, OK, what do I do with the input? So here we go. This yellow line here represents the input. So the human takes their hand and turns this particular tap. Now their job may be to get a particular flow rate of liquid out of this tap, but they're not allowed to look at the tap. All they can do is say, this is the flow rate I want. That means perhaps I should turn the tap three revolutions or whatever. So they do that. Are they going to get the correct flow rate? And of course, what you're going to tell me is in practice, no. Because they don't know what the flow rate is, they've just turned the tap 
They might be right, but they're more likely to be wrong. Here's another example. Preparing a boiled egg. I'm sure we've all done this and ended up with an egg which is far too hard boiled or perhaps too soft boiled. In this particular case, you can see the egg running out. It's a little bit soft boiled. Now, if the instructions say that the egg should be boiled for 180 seconds, but you do not have access to a watch, what are you going to do? Well, you'll put the egg in and you'll probably count. You'll go one, two, three, and you will estimate 180 seconds. Now, if you overestimate, you'll get a hard boiled egg. If you underestimate, you'll get a soft boiled egg. But you won't get it right because the likelihood that you can get 180 seconds exactly or close to is pretty small without a watch. Here's a different example. You've got a grill in which you can make toast, but, and this is the key point, you're deaf and you're blind. So how are you going to work out um, whether the toast is done or not? What you could do is you could set a timer to toast the bread for 120 seconds. So here's my timer over here. So in essence, I put the toast in the grill, I set the timer for 120 seconds, and when 120 seconds is up, I take the toast out. Now, is the toast likely to be right? What do you think? Well, my view is no. And why no? I'm sure you've all done things where is the, t is the bread, now if we've got different types of bread here, the bread could be dry or it could be moist. And depending on the bread that you put in the toaster, it takes different lengths of time to toast. <laughs> And there are a number of other criteria that might come in as well. So if you set a fixed time, the likelihood that the toast comes out correct is fairly small. And the key problem here is no observation. We're not checking. We're just putting the bread in 120 seconds and out it comes. Another example then, a manufacturing process. In order for a given process to work correctly, the temperature of an outlet flow must be exactly 41 degrees. Now you're going to mix hot water, which is coming at approximately 100 degrees or just below, with cold water, which is at the outside temperature. And what you can do is you can open and shut a tap to change the flow of cold water. So you'll see here I've got a cold water tap. In essence, you can open that a different amount to allow different amounts of cold water into the hot flow. However, you have no means of measuring the actual temperature of the flow coming out. So you don't know what the temperature is of this outflow. Are you able to get the correct temperature just by guessing how much you move the open tap? And clearly, the answer is you might end up with water which is a bit too hot and you're going to boil, or you might end up with water which is a little bit too cold, in which case you're going to freeze. So what's wrong here? The biggest problem we've got here is a lack of measurement information. We have no means of measuring the output and thus no information. We really do not know if the output is correct or incorrect because we're not measuring it. We're making an estimate of the input that we require. We're putting the input in and it might work and it might not work. So without information about the output, we've got no mechanism for adjusting the system input. And that's the key thing here. If we can't measure the output, we don't know if it's right. If we don't know it's right, we've got no information we can use to say, I need to change the system input. So what we've illustrated here is that open loop control essentially means there is no measurement of the output, and thus the input is an estimate. In practice, this estimate will be wrong, and hence the output behavior will not match the target exactly. It might be close, but it might actually be quite a long way away as well. There are a number of examples of simple rhosis where we might wish to control the output to a given value. Humidity and temperature for air conditioning. If those aren't right, then the room will not be comfortable. Altitude and attitude of a cruising aircraft. There are legislation about this. The aircraft is told you must be at this altitude. You cannot vary, and therefore they cannot get it wrong. Spin speed in a DV drive. If the speed's wrong, the DVD will not work properly, or the video you're watching will just seem a bit odd. Mixture ratios of fuel and air in an engine. They're quite important in order for the engine to perform well, and also to do with um, the environment and making sure we don't create too much pollution. 
the pressure of fluid entering a turbine in order for the turbine to operate efficiently. And I'm sure you can think of a large number of examples where we really do need to get the output correct, otherwise the consequences could be disastrous or expensive. So in, ca in many cases, it's important for the output to track the target. And what we've shown is that open loop control doesn't tend to do this. So the conclusion, for many systems, it's important to control the output to a specified value. But if we use estimates of the system gain, or what we've called here open loop control, this will not achieve that in general. So open loop control fails for many reasons. And we've summarized the two main reasons here. Incorrect estimate of gain. That's because you have modeled the system. You've got an idea about what the system is, but it's not exact. And this sort of, sort of error is often called parameter uncertainty. So parameter, parameter uncertainty causes incorrect estimates of gain, and therefore your output will not track the target. The other form of error can be due to varying external conditions. Could be the external temperature, or the external wind, or the external pressure, or a number of things. And these are often denoted as disturbances. And because we have no information about disturbances, we can't use this information to change the input, and therefore we get the wrong output.